Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good afternoon everyone. So today we will continue our lesson on mechatronic system design, chapter 1, which is relating to the introductions to mechatronic system design. So based on the previous lesson, we have learned until the issues in integrated design. Alright, when the hardware and software are developed in parallel, real-time simulation are performed during mechatronics design to reduce development cycle and time to market. So what is actually real-time simulation? So real-time simulation is actually a simulation on a component in which its input and output signals have the same time dependence values of real component. So it means that when we are developing mechatronic system design, we need to do some simulation. So the simulation, it must has the same time dependent values. So it means that the characteristics of time between the real hardware and also the simulated hardware must be the same. So there are two types of real time simulation. So the first type is controlled prototyping and the second type is hardware in the loop. So what is actually control prototyping and hardware in the loop? So control prototyping is actually hardware and control algorithm are simulated together with a real process. Okay, for example, as you can see here, we, for example, we have a controller called Arduino. Okay, and then you simulated the control algorithm by using Arduino inside your computer. And then you connected your computer to the real system. As you can see here, this is a real system. Alright, and this is the simulated control that you have developed inside your computer. Okay, the controller is simulated, but the real system is being used. So that is actually control prototyping simulation. Next is HIL or hardware in the loop simulation. So in HIL, a real hardware and control algorithm together with a simulated process. All right, so if you already develop a good algorithm in control prototyping simulation, so you can implement it in the real hardware. Okay, so you already upload all of your control algorithm inside the real control hardware here, for example, and then you test your real control hardware with a simulated process. For example, if you have a mobile robot, so you will um, connect it inside your computer that contain the model of the robot, the transfer function of the robot. Right? So this is because we wanted to test the capability of the real control hardware before we implement it in the real system. So that is what actually control prototyping and also hardware in the loop where control prototyping, you simulated your control system, all right? And then you connect it to the real hardware, your real system. But for HIL, hardware in the loop, you upload all of your control algorithm in the real hardware, real control hardware, okay? You can see here, so this is a controller, all right? And then the controller will be connected to a computer which contain a simulated process, all right? which, for example, the model, the transfer functions, right? Before you proceed with the next stage where you implemented all of these things, you upload all of the control algorithm in a real control hardware, and then you connect it to the real process. So this is, this is actually the step in designing mechatronics control system because we wanted to uh, do some parallel process. Therefore, we need to do this process so that when you implement the real control hardware with the real process, there shouldn't be much problem later on. Okay, so that is some of the issues in integrated design. All right, next we go to the mechatronics design process. So what is actually the steps in mechatronic design? All right, so in mechatronic design process, we can divide it by using three phase. The first phase is modeling and simulation. The second phase is prototyping and the third phase is implementations and life cycle. All right, 
so for this example i will be giving an example of developing a mobile robot all right so for the first step which is the modeling and simulation we do the requirement analysis so what is the required element inside the mobile robot for example we need a wheel we need a motor we need like a base structure and so on so that is requirement analysis you analyze what are the requirement which is needed in order for you to build a mobile robot all right the second part is concept design and functional specification so in this space this is where you can design the shape of your mobile robot the function of your mobile robot and you can specify what is the function of the wheel what is the function of the structure and what is the function of any other things that is available inside your mobile robot so this is the next stage all right and then the third stage is mathematical modeling so when you already have your structure right where you put the wheels how many wheels that you want right you can model your system all right so there are lots of uh, robotic model available two wheels robot four wheels robot omni wheels robot so there are lots of models available and you can adapt from those models so that is the example of mathematical modeling where the output of this uh, step which will be the transfer function in terms of mathematics for example sine cos right so those things you will be uh, studying in detail in your robotic course all right and then the fourth stage is sensors and actuators selections so where in the second stage where you uh, design your mobile robot okay so there you already can specify what kind of sensor that you wanted to use for example ultrasonic sensors lidar sensors you wanted to use encoders so that is the sensors that you will be select in this stage all right and for actuators actuators is actually related to the motors okay for example you have a dc motor or you wanted to use ac motor so that is depending on your application or your specification that you have been specified in the second stage here so that is the sensors and actuators selection all right so the next stage is a further modular modeling so when you already combine all of those things the structure the sensors the actuator right so you can do the further modular modeling where you model all of those things inside one um, system okay all right so and then the next stage you go to the control system design so this is where you need to design the control system where how on, on how you want it to move your robot how you want it to move your robot um, forward how you want it to move your robot backwards how you want it to move your robot in rotating 90 degree 80 degree so that is where the control system design stage is initiated you will design um, like a control system to control the robot movement because our example here today is a mobile robot okay that is the control system design and then next is design optimization so if you are testing your control so okay so this design is not that optimized so we need to change a little okay because the control system is not that good all right and then you decide that okay so we need to uh, reduce the mass of the robot reduce the size of the robot or increase the wheel size and so on so that is design optimization where after the design optimization you will go back to the mathematical modeling because if you change your structure or if you change the shape of the wheel for example your model will be different later on all right that's why you need to go back to the mathematical modeling and you selecting back the process all right okay and then if the design has been optimized you go to the prototyping okay so here you can see here we have hil simulation all right so in hil simulation where you upload the control algorithm inside a real control hardware all right and then you connect it to the simulation environment or simulation process so where do you, you want it to get the simulation process is actually inside the mathematical modeling okay basically you connect your controller to the mathematical modeling and then it will give the output that you want all right and then we go uh, to the next stage where we have some design optimization 
and if your optimization has been optimized if your design has been optimized you will go to the embedded software imp implementation where you will finalize your software all right where will you you will finalize the software of your control system and then you will be uploaded into the real control system or real control hardware and then you will be connected to the real system which is the mobile robot earlier all right and then we go to the last stage which, which is the life cycle optimization so for example you use the, the mobile robot for one month all right and then suddenly it has a new problem so you need to optimize back okay so you need to go back here if it has any problem you need to go back here and you need to redesign your mobile robot so you need to diagnose what is the problem of the mobile robot so what are the specification that we need to change in order for us to solve the problem so that is life cycle optimization so this is actually the example of mechatronics design process so this is the usual process where the mechatronics engineers use in order for them to design some uh, complete system for their mechatronics all right next we go to the writing design specifications so what is actually design specifications so design specification or requirement list is a document represents the specification against which the success of the design process can be judged so design specification is actually like one document that represents all of the specifications that indicates the success of the process so if your process has been success or your design process has been success so you need to list out what are the specification that contributes to the success of your design then requirement list so inside your uh, design specification you have the requirement list so usually the requirement list are trying to answer the following questions so the first question is what are the objective that the intended solution is expected to satisfy right so before you designing something so you must have the objective so why does i design this mobile robot so what are the what are the objective so in your requirement list you need to answer those questions right next is what properties it must have so when you are designing something you must be no okay so this mobile robot must have this kind of properties if they wanted to solve this problem it must have these properties okay and then what properties it must not have okay for example in designing mobile robot the properties that it mustn't have is for example it mustn't have some uh, blade blade okay blade that is rotating so if you have blades it it is becoming quite rotor it doesn't be, it doesn't becoming the mobile robot okay because your mobile robot didn't fly so it must not have any blade so that is the properties that it must not have so you need to identify the objective okay the properties that it must have and also the properties that it must not have right so that is the requirement list that is um must be included in your design specification all right so this is the example for the template or layout all right so where you have the user for example uh, samsung all right and then you have requirement list for what is your name of project or what is your name of product okay so identification classification classification is like the version of your um, of your design specification and then the number of page lah right and then you have the changes here so if you have any change you need to put the date of change here all right and then this is the list of your requirements and then this is the uh, design group which is who are responsible for that design and then if your version of the design specification replace the issues of the previous you need to put replace issue or issue of what is the version that you replace okay and then as you can see here specify why whether item is d or w so what is actually d or w okay so to know what is d or w we need to prioritizing customer requirement so as an engineer usually you are designing a system that the customer requires okay when the customer requests okay right now i wanted to you i wanted you to design this system right so as a mechatronics engineer you need to aware you need to be aware of the essential requirements as well as the one that can be compromised all right so in terms of requirement first we have an essential requirement which is the requirement that is really really needed in order for us to design these things 
and then the second types of requirement is the requirement that can be compromised so we can do some negotiation with your client all right in order for you to uh, do or to design that kind of requirement that is the compromise requirement all right okay so the step of prioritizing you need to assign an importance rating for each requirement okay so you have the list of requirement and then you need to give some uh, rating for example 1 to 10 where 10 equals to the most important and 1 equals to the least important so you list out all of the requirement and you give the rating of each requirement the 10 is the most important and 1 is the least important okay so d or w is classified as demand or wishes where d obviously lah is a demand w is is a wishes okay so demands are requirements that must be met under all circumstances so if you have classified the specification as a demand so you must uh, fulfill those uh, specification all right so if any one of the demands has not been fulfilled so the solution is unacceptable so you cannot solve the solution unless all of the demands has been fulfilled so that is the demands all right so wishes are the requirement that should be taken into consideration whenever possible so if for example you have an additional time so you can entertain the wishes i'm sorry uh, so you can fulfill all of the wishes lah right but the prioritization you must go to the demand okay wishes is actually like an add-on for your system right so that is d and w where d equals to demands w equals to wishes right so let's take a look at the example of writing design specifications so this is one of the example of uh, design specification that has been written by Siemens okay so this is Siemens from Siemens requirement list for this is their project a printed circuit board positioning machine machine sorry and this is the issues the issues on 27th April 1988 and this is page number one all right and the changes and the dates of the changes all right and then this is the requirement of your uh, design okay and who are responsible which is the Langner's group right and each of the requirement you need to indicate whether it is a demand or it is a wishes all right so this is how you can write your design specification so you list all of the requirement you put the categorization of demands or wishes and then if there is any changes you put the date of the changes right you put the name of your company you put requirement requirement list for a what is your project name right and the page and who are responsible so that is how you can write design specification all right so let's take a look at example number two so design a wheelchair retrieval you need to assist nurses in situation where a patient is taking a walk with his nurse and then in about 30 minutes feel tired so the nurse must remain with the patient to support him and should be able to use one hand to activate the wheelchair retrieval unit so as you can see here you already can determine what is the demand and what is the wishes all right so this is the example of of the requirement that you can list out the dimension reach patient in one minute water resistance table ability to support patient way easy to operate low maintenance durable so that is all of the demands and this is the rating that you put for the demands okay and then the optional or the wishes is stop quick comfort is equal to control and so on lah so from this statement you can list out all of the requirements which are needed right and then you can put the rating of each requirement 10 becoming the most uh, prioritized and uh, one is the least prioritized right and then from there you can give the labels whether it is a demand or it is a wishes so that is how you can write design specification from the statement okay all right so okay guys i think that's all for our uh, class today so you just a uh, short class all right and then if you have any question please ask me in the whatsapp group i'm sorry in the telegram group okay so you can just ask me in the telegram group all right guys okay that's all for today's class thank you very much assalamualaikum and have a good day everyone